getting the chance to kind of look at the film now from the weekend. What, any more specific details or reasons the, the red zone struggles were there from what you thought just right after the game? Well, we, we had three drives. We had uh, a couple penalties that hurt us. You know, we're jumping. We're in a matter, matter of fact, we're in the, the office right now evaluating our red zone on the season. And, uh, you know, I think we've got Numerous penalties. We have a few drops. We have uh, inability to run the ball at times against a decent box. Uh, we have a couple uh, poor poor decisions in terms of where to throw the ball. Um, we have some one-on-one -on -one opportunities that we didn't. So to answer your question, it's not we're not really earmarking one issue. It's it's overall execution and efficiency in the red zone. Um, obviously, it needs to be addressed. We were pretty good in the red zone in a number of different games, but um, you know I think that's what what hurt us the most offensively at Auburn, and you know it's going to be something that we emphasize here for the next two weeks heading into South Carolina. I don't think we're going to win any games um, without performing better in the red zone, and uh, you know that's that's probably our number one purpose right now. And we're going to get that done. Hey, Phil, how did Greg Little grade out for you guys? Um, I, I, I think uh, not just focusing on Greg Little, but I think um, him being a part of that whole unit, we, we, we want to be more physical. We need to be more physical. Um, that's, that's the charge from Coach Luke, and I know that's the expectation of Coach McNeil, and I know that's my expectation. And so, you know, that's something um, I think that uh, we aim to work on Tuesday and Wednesday with regards to our running game. I know y'all are still looking at red zone right now, but uh, schematically, are there things y'all could do differently there? To, to uh, you know, Matt talked about getting the ball to guys who win one on ones. Well, I, I think schematically, we we like what we're doing in terms of uh, the X's and O's. But sometimes the X's and O's on the field, if we're not producing, in a scenario like like Matt alluded to, if you have a one on one situation, we have we have a one on one situation that we looked at this morning, and we're over three on it. You know, probably not going to be over four because we're not going to run it again. You know, you're going to you're going to focus in on some other plays that we've had more success. Um, we're going to we're going to definitely direct the ball to some guys that uh, have made some uh, some hay in those one on one situations. And you know, we're also going to look to try to get our guys in a, in a in a better position to to run the football more effectively down in the red zone. I asked Matt this, Phil, uh, from Jordan's perspective. I'm assuming that most of the stuff in the, in the red zone is RPOs. Is he making the right call between run, pass, or whatever you want him to do there? You know, I think Jordan has his share of uh, plays he'd like to have back. Uh, but it, and, and I'm not trying to defend the blame. I mean, at the end of the day, it's my responsibility. But I'm not trying to steer it in one direction or the other. It's, it is a collective uh, – unit issue and Jordan is has plays that he's responsible for. We he missed the slant that was open off of a swing throw yesterday uh, or Saturday that um, he could have made that would have been productive for us. But it, it is a we, we need to play smarter, tighter uh, and more aggressive football in the red zone to finish drives the way we did earlier in the season. As I think that that makes a huge difference in Saturday's game, and it's going to play a pivotal part in our success going into this this four game stretch we have left. Matt talked about a couple of the plays where they just brought more blitzers than you guys had blockers. Do, do you think the offense is particularly susceptible to that, or, or what can you do to prevent when they just have more blitzers than you have blockers? No, we we had two plays against Cover Zero that we didn't handle well. Um, between the RBs, the O-line, the quarterback, that, that deal. Um, one of them we handled okay, two of them we didn't handle well. Uh, one of them, Kevin Steele dialed up a pressure we hadn't seen and, uh, you know, we, we, we got that answered in between plays, but, uh, you know, he, they got home on Jordan on one play. And uh, so, you know, these are areas that we're talking about right now with you guys that, you know, you, you make a list and you look at the things that you have to improve on. That's part of getting better every week as a team. And you address them and you work on them in practice so that 
uh, you know, the, the worst thing is to continue to keep making the same mistakes over and over. You know, and we, we have a good staff here. That's not something that happens. And so what we need to do, and I've always said with this group, it's a veteran group. Um, it's a mature group. We, we almost always get what we emphasize. And so we're going to focus in this week on getting better ourselves. It won't be about South Carolina. We'll address our red zone issues. We'll address the physicality in the run game. We're going to address handling cover zero. We're going to address the one-on-one -on -one deal. And, um, you know, just maybe make some – some different calls in those situations that might help promote those guys being a little bit more successful next time we get down to the red zone. That's, that's the truth. Maybe this should have been asked to Matt, um, forgot to ask, but you as a coach, there were obviously several questionable calls there in the first half, one being the targeting there. Um, when you look back at the film and you look at that targeting call that got called uh, back, uh, what did you see there, and have you all addressed that with the SEC? Uh, in terms of what we addressed with the SEC, that is, that's Coach Luke's call. Um, with regards to some of the calls in the game, this is my 28th season. I have, even when I've wanted to, I have not questioned officials. And so I'm not going to change that trend now. Um, the only comment I would make is I think when you have a call that threatens the health of a player. I just think you've, you've got to make sure that you look into that and make the right call because uh, there was one in the game that I thought uh, endangered the, the, the health of, of, a, of a player. And that was the one that really upset me the most. Outside of that, you know, uh, calls generally are never perfect, but they fall evenly in a game most of the time. It's part of the game, in my opinion. And you got to overcome a bad call, and you take advantage of a call maybe that goes your way, and you just play football. And that's just that's kind of the way I see it. I know you're trying to uh, not be controversial to the SEC, but have you noticed since you've been at Ole Miss uh, um, a trend of of calls going against you, especially at home versus when you're on the road at other places, just in general? You know, I'm sitting here thinking about it. I don't, I don't know that I've ever felt that way. Um, you'll leave every game with a call you think you should have had. And uh, you'll leave every game knowing that, you know, hey, probably didn't, didn't happen that way, but we'll take it. And I just uh, – the officiating – and I'm not trying to avoid – because you'd be, you'd be able to tell in my face it'd be harder for me to, to avoid uh, saying something if, if I really was upset with it. But – the officiating in games is better in some than in others. I think that's in any league, in any conference, at any level. Um, but I do think it, at the end of the day, it falls out evenly. And it, that has never been in my thought process. The only calls that really upset me are the ones that endanger players. That's, those are the ones that are, that are issues in my mind, truthfully.